morning. Our next session is entitled Critical Internet Infrastructure in the Caribbean. And I would like to invite the panelists, Dr. Arturo Servin, Mr. Stephen Lee, and Max Larson Henry. When we are talking about critical infrastructure, first of all, I think we need to define what we mean with critical. When we're talking about critical, critical is something that is crucial. For example, if you like to fly an airplane from Aruba to Curacao, using, for example, a Cessna 172, and I'm giving this example because I've done it several times, and I see my friend Charlton laughing. So, for example, the flaps of that particular airplane's I mean, if they're not working, there is no problem with that. You can still land that particular airplane safely on, on, in another country, on, a, on, a, on an airstrip. But if the engine doesn't work, then that is something else. Or if you don't have a landing gear, that's something else. So um, with the internet, there are some critical um, infrastructure as well. And this is basically what we're going to discuss with our panelists this morning. So first, I would like to start with Dr. Arturo Servin. Most of the time, he doesn't want, he want us to call him doctor, but he's doctor. So I'm still, I'm, I'm giving you your honor as Dr. Arturo Servin. Um, Dr. Arturo Servin is currently the chief technology officer at the Internet Ad Address Registry for Latin America and the Caribbean, LACNIC. Before joining LACNIC, Arturo worked as a re research engineer, consultant, and network manager at vi various organizations um, in the UK and Mexico. He received his PhD, PhD from the Department of Computer Science at the University Science at the University of York, where his research focused on artificial intelligence, machine learning, and network security. In addition, he holds a master's degree in telecom management and a bachelor of science in electronic systems engineering, both from ITESM campus Monterrey, Mexico, and Monterrey, Mexico. Arturo has worked on multiple innovation projects, including the development of Internet 2 in Mexico, where he served as chairman of the Network Development Committee, committee and coordinator of the working group on IP multicast. So I would like to call Dr. Arturo Servin to come forward and share with us your thoughts on critical infrastructure. Let's give him a round of applause. Well, I'm presenting Prezi. Probably I should stick to my to my normal PowerPoint presentation because I can explain it how to do it. This presentation was made uh, by Christian uh, Flaherty from ISOC, uh, Guillermo Cecileo from the uh, 
uh, network of Argentinian uh, universities, and Ariel Greiser from uh, Cabase and Like IX. Uh, so that's why it's in, in, in impressive. And I, I adapted a bit to here. This is the first time that I use Prestige, so I'm sorry about this. How do, do you, does anybody know how do I put the, uh, the, uh, the full screen for the Prestige presentation? This is very important when we're dealing with critical things. This is a yeah. good example. Thank you. Well, after a PhD, and I don't know what else. <laughs> These new technologies. Okay, let's talk about uh, internet exchange point and, and, and how uh, and why they are important. Uh, basically, um, what I'm going to show you is how the internet works, and uh, we will find out that there are some critical paths uh, in all our connections uh, to the internet and. Even very simple things like uh, going to a web page means that the packets, the traffic has to go to many places. And uh, when you are a, a, an island that probably they j you just have one link to the, to the world, uh, that becomes critical and, uh, and we will see why. So you have a, 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 a web page. Basically there is uh, the, the web page of uh, uh, the Internet Society. So uh, what you, uh, your uh, computer will do is well to try uh, to resolve that name to an IP address. So basically, uh, humans, well, we talk, we, we use domain names and, uh, and names to remember things. But uh, computers, they need numbers. And uh, basically, we, we have, uh, as we uh, were talking ab about yesterday, we have V6 and, uh, and V4 addresses. So there is a database in the internet that is called the DNS that basically relates names and IP address. It can be a, a, a V4 address or a, or a V6 address. So when your computer uh, or you try to access a, a web page, the first thing that your computer has to do is to translate that name to a number so they can call that number in some way. So it's like a, the telephone network. So basically the numbers sorry, the names, are in a, in, a, in a, like a tree. And we have the root over there, and uh, we have, not supposed to do that. Yeah, we have the root, and then we have all the, uh, uh, the uh, DNS names. We have the dot .org, the dot .com, the dot uh, uh, in this case, uh, CCTLD in Bolivia, and then, in the if we go down to the to, to that tree, we will see that, for example, under dot or or RG there is ISOC, and under ISOC probably there will be www. Also, uh, in this case, uh, it could be uh, AW, for example, uh, it will be gov edu, and. Down there, there will be another domain, and then down there, it will be a, 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 a name. So basically, your computer will start in the root, and it will ask the root, hey, I want to resolve lagnik.net, or www.lagnik.net. So it will go to the root. The root will say, well, I don't know lagnik.net. I, I know .net. So go and ask them. So your computer go there recursively. We, we call this re recursion. It will go to .NET and will ask, okay, I want to know 
www.lagnic.net. .net will tell them, I don't know about www.lagnic.net, but I can tell you who is Lagnit, Lagnit.net. So it will go to the next level. We'll ask finally uh, the authoritative uh, DNS of Lagnic, and it will resolve finally to www.lagnit.net. Uh, to do all that, because it's recursive, well, you see your computer ask and ask, that is, is, is very quickly. Also the computer, they have what we call a cache, so they will remember those responses for, for some time, so they don't have to ask every time. But uh, this is not a, a, a completely a, um, transparent. All those packets, those are the, uh, the, the uh, IP address of the DNS that will tell you who is who. Uh, all that, well, it goes to in IPv4, IPv6, but it has to go to, the, to your service provider network. And your service provider network probably will have a, an autonomous system number. There are some, we have IP addresses in the internet, and we also have autonomous system numbers that basically is a collection of routers that are under a single uh, organization, and they, have, uh, they share the same uh, routing policies. Uh, so basically that would be an ISP. But in order to go to ISOC, to the web page, and also to the, to the, to the root, and also going to the, to the uh, uh, DNS from, from Internet Society, uh, it has to transfer, trans, uh, to go probably to a national uh, internet uh, ISP, or probably it could be international, or it could be a, a, a very large ISP, depending of, 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 of which country or which network we are talking. So basically, what you do there is you pay for transit. So you pay another ASN to transit your network so you can go to the, to, to, to the internet. Sometimes you have a, a lot of uh, uh, traffic among other ASNs or other networks, and you said, okay, I have a lot of traffic. For example, if Chernon and I, we were like uh, service providers, and, and I have a lot of users and a lot of content, and Chernon or the, the network from Chernon, they have um, a lot of traffic as well. Uh, but Carlos, uh, well, he interconnects to us, so, so, so Carlos is our link. So we send all the traffic to Carlos, and Carlos interconnects us. It's like a, a third party. Then Chernon and I discover that uh, we have a lot of traffic, so probably we can put a link between us uh, and, and share information that will be probably cheaper. So that's, that's, that's peering. And, uh, uh, and that decreased the price of, uh, of, of interconnection in the internet. Uh, it could be not, it could be not as, is as simple as that, because then I can discover that also with uh, Stephen I have a lot of traffic, and also with uh, uh, Max I have a lot of traffic, and uh, with uh, Alexandra and with somebody else. And then I will have to have a lot of connection with them, uh, which probably won't scale, because probably they also they want to have connection with all of us. So we will see what will happen in that scenario, but let's, let's, let's go further. So all this connection, they go to the internet that is a, a, a very, uh, very big uh, interconnection of network. So that will be the internet. So you are the little tiny, or you may be one of the little tiny uh, service providers there. You can be one of the big, service providers in the internet that, that are in the core or the, or, or, or of the internet. Also, well, we, we, we didn't go to that cloud, but also there are content providers because there are some uh, um, providers that they connect users to the internet. So they, they provide access through mobile uh, networks or to broadband uh, networks, but also there are providers that they have content like video, movies, um, text, uh, newspapers, whatever. So we have all these, like uh, the people that want the information and the people that, uh, that have the information. And we need to interconnect all of those and we use the internet in this kind of a, a hierarchical, multi-interconnected uh, network. As I said, uh, if we want to share traffic, probably it won't be very scalable to build networks between us because, well, it's, it's, it's costly. So maybe uh, we will want to uh, build an internet change point. So basically instead of building links and, and, and having multi uh, relationships uh, with links uh, which uh, everybody connects to everybody, 
we can agree to go to one place to put some network equipment there and connect our network there and interchange traffic uh, between us, uh, between service providers and content providers. So in the, in the internet change point, we will have um, internet service providers, we have uh, content delivery networks like uh, uh, Akamai, Netflix, uh, Limelight, um, some others. We could have also uh, some uh, caches. Uh, we also could have uh, DNS servers there. So it will be, uh, you saw in the, uh, in the example of Carlos that uh, sometimes it takes like 200 milliseconds to go to the root uh, DNS. You will have uh, a DNS, a root DNS in your, in your internet change point or in your network, probably will be in two or three milliseconds the, 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 the delay to, to, to read that server. But also no, it's not, not only the root, probably you will need to, you will uh, want to have some other DNS infrastructure. As we saw, there is not only the root, there are the CCTLDs, the GLTLDs. So probably you would like to have your CCTLD in different countries. So if something happened uh, with the fiber interconnection, there is some, re uh, still there, there will be some reachability between you. Also, you can have data centers there. So basically, uh, content providers like uh, uh, banks or um, uh, the government with the e program, the e government program that generate content. So you want to have that content as close as the user that uh, is accessing the, 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 the broadband network, mobile, or, or, or fixed. And basically, uh, in, the, in, in the best of cases, uh, uh, internet exchange points. Uh, they are more e efficient uh, in, 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 in interchanging traffic because we don't have to build all this, a lot of interconnection between us. You just go, we just go to one place and we interchange traffic there. I, I, I normally see or I try to do the analogy of uh, internet change points like the markets, like the markets that where you go and buy fruit or you buy meat or, or other places. Imagine that the uh, internet change point is, is, is the market and the ISP, they have the user, the user want content. They want to access information. Content delivery networks, this, the, the data centers, uh, the content providers, they have the content that the user wants. So one way to make it very easy uh, 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 and very cost effective is to bring the offer and the demand in the same place. So you can have like a market there where people is accessing the content and the content is reaching the people very quickly and uh, in an efficient manner. Also, less delay because they are interconnected. They, they, they need to, 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 well, they don't need to go to, many, to other places to interchange uh, traffic. Like, we don't have to go to Carlos anymore. We can just interchange it here, which it will be quicker. Qui quickly. Uh, it will be probably less cost because we don't have to build uh, a lot of links. And uh, sometimes those transit connections, they cost more than the connection that we will have locally to, to, the, to the internet exchange point. Uh, also more bandwidth, imagine uh, having a CDN there, uh, uh, accessing uh, high uh, definition videos, trying to go that with your, with your transit links, probably will be very costly, and having there in the internet point, it will be uh, much better, more bandwidth, less cost, more scalable, and, and, and obviously uh, more robust, because we will have uh, uh, more, uh, more efficient ways to, to internet, uh, to, to interchange traffic. And uh, basically, there are more, but uh, there are some statistics about uh, traffic in Latin America. Uh, uh, I couldn't uh, modify the presentation uh, in Prezi, but uh, I, I will give you more uh, uh, data tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a panel about IPv6. So I, uh, well, Martin is gonna give you uh, some uh, stats about uh, IPv6 and some other things, and I will uh, go, uh, try to look deep in, 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 in stats about IPv6 in the Caribbean that somebody asked uh, in, in the morning. Uh, but basically what I wanted to, to show you is uh, why internet exchange points are important and, uh, and why they are there. Because the internet is a, is a very complex network and wha uh, what we want to do uh, win with internet exchange points is to bring the content as close as possible to the user and try to those packets to be as, as, as more efficient in their interconnection, that they don't have to, go to transverse a lot of network to reach the, the, the final destinations. Thank you very much, Doctor.
Our next presenter is uh, Mr. Stephen Lee. Stephen Lee is one of the founding members of the Caribbean Network Operators Group, CaribNOC, and he sits on the CaribNOC coordinating team. His responsibilities include CaribNOC program development, delivering training on internet infrastructure issues, and promoting the adoption of IPv6. Stephen Lee works closely with the Caribbean Telecommunication Union, particularly in the areas of internet infrastructure, implementation of IP technologies, and promoting best practices in the management of SMB and enterprise networks. He spends a great deal of time helping organizations understand the impact of ICT on their business and people and dealing with the human, te technical, and economic issues faced when rolling out ICT services in underserved communities and developing regions. Mr. Lee is the, is the CEO of Architects Incorporated, a technology service provider based in Florida and Trinidad. He is also the infrastructure team leader of Congress WBN a global value-based leadership organization currently operating in over 95 countries worldwide. May invite Stephen Lee to come forward and address us. Uh, thank you, Shernon. Morning, everyone. Okay, it's still morning. Let me get connected here quickly. Um, so, I'm uh, going to talk um, just a couple of things. One, um, first will be just briefly about CARBNOG um, to let you know um, to more about the organization. And then I'm going to talk about um, specifically about Caribbean internet um, infrastructure issues. Um, so, CARBNOG is a, a dedicated community of network operators and stakeholders um, uh, in, the Caribbean, in the Caribbean region. Um, we started in 2010. I think some of you might have heard yesterday out of an initiative of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union and Congress WBN. So it, it, uh, the CARBNOG group actually existed. Um, the, the persons who are part of it and the functions of CARBNOG actually existed inside of, um, inside of the CTU and more or less a part of the, the CTU's roadshow program before we were able to formally establish uh, establish a group and we did this in concert with a lot of support at the time from um, from LATNIC and from Aaron and from the um, North America Network Operators Group NANA. A lot of the persons in those organizations um, basically helped to, to give advice and input actually did a lot of the training at some of our first meet, uh, meetings. So um, as, as I think most of most of persons here would be familiar that um, of what NOGS do um, CARIBNOG, um, we share technical expertise uh, amongst the members, and we're talking about uh, people who operate um, the networks in the Caribbean, service provider networks, uh, so people from uh, Columbus and Lime and Digicel, um, as well as uh, uh, persons in enterprise, um, banks, um, education, other financial institutions. Uh, we basically um, provide a forum for them to, to share expertise. Um, we do training um, to build technical capacity and we uh, promote best practices um, for network management, for security, and so on. So um, CARIBNOG, as, as you would imagine, is very interested in um, regional internet infrastructure uh, development, um, issues like internet exchange points, IPv6, and so on. Uh, specific uh, objectives um, uh, bring together uh, professionals and practitioners um, to basically harness their knowledge and experiences, um, build a technical expert base. Uh, what, what we um, uh, pause here specifically to say, um, we have a lot of, of um, expertise inside of, inside of the region. Uh, a lot of you here 
our, our experts, and this, this expertise is usually applied um, inside of uh, your own organizations, inside of uh, companies and so on, service providers. Uh, but what we don't have in a very um, uh, 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 well-organized way is a whole technical base that's able to all work together towards common problems. And that's one of the things that, that Carbnog is, is, um, is seeking to build. Um, out of that expertise, serve national and, and regional uh, issues, um, foster research, and ultimately be able to develop the Caribbean internet infrastructure. Uh, our first meeting was in St. Martin um, in 2010. A um, few of the persons here, um, uh, Shernan was there, um, so was Arturo. A number, um, number of persons were at that first meeting in 2010, was part of um, a CTU, ICT roadshow meeting. And at that point in time, we, um, we focused a lot on some of the more traditional um, NOG topics of the time, um, general training in, in routing, um, BVP, and so on. Um, also focused a lot of, um, of training on the issues with, which would be of importance to small and medium-sized um, enterprises, so things like, um, like VoIP, um, proper networking practices, and so on. Um, over time, we, we've migrated um, in, in some of our emphases, um, have been doing um, smaller training meetings um, with the CTU. Um, specifically, CARBNOG sessions will be inside of uh, CTU roadshow uh, programs. So there are a lot of, um, I think the, the roadshow is on to 20-something um, or 30 um, uh, events over the last um, uh, 07, so probably, yeah, over, over five years. Um, and so CARBNOG sessions form a part of that as well as um, over the last couple of years, we've we specifically partnered with the CTU in IXP workshops um, throughout the Caribbean region. Uh, current focus areas, um, uh, there are three tracks basically inside of CARBNOG right now, which we are putting a lot of focus. Um, one is on the development of internet exchange points. Um, that's starting to take off a lot more inside the region. Um, security, um, cyber security. Um, which we find um, still requires a lot of um, uh, knowledge and, and, and sharing of experience and development of expertise in the region and um, rollout of IPv6. Right. Our next meeting will be in, um, at the end of September in Belize, um, end of September, early October, and we'll be sending out an, an announcement. So this is just to give, um, give some, some background on CARIBNOG and as I said before, this is a, 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 a network operators group that has tremendous support um, from LATNIC, and we're looking to, to build on that support going forward. All right, um, Caribbean internet um, infrastructure. Uh, a lot of the, the things in this um, information in this presentation actually started out of some research that we did uh, starting in 2010, and I've more or less um, continued to, to, to work on coming forward, um, specifically um, out of a request from um, Christian um, in Latnik uh, to put together some, some information as, as part of um, research that we wanted to share at, at the first LATNOG, LATNOG meeting. So um, this actually started out of a, a LATNOG initiative in partnership um, with CARIBNOG. And we wanted to look at what were some of the um, real issues being faced um, in the region with respect to um, the state of, of internet infrastructure, um, the performance of it. I think a lot of persons um, at that time, we had um, a sense of, of how things were. Um, there wasn't much pairing going on. Uh, we would see latency issues. If you, did, um, if you did your trace routes and pings, you'd see where traffic is going generally. But, um, at certainly at the level of um, the network operators, there wasn't any hard evidence or empirical evidence um, of a lot of this data. So we set out to, to actually measure these, um, these things. I think um, the, the, the presentation that, that Carlos gave a little earlier um, factors very much into, into that whole approach of being able to, to capture information and, and record em empirical data that helps to um, improve the performance of networks. Um, so I, th I think that's actually something that we would want to get some more information on to, to, um, to present to um, the, the CARIBNOG members. Uh, this is the uh, more or less uh, picture of the Caribbean um, connectivity map. I think most persons would, have, um, would be familiar with it. 
Um, in essence, uh, we know that there are lots, uh, lots of cable systems throughout the, the Caribbean region. Uh, some of the earliest ones, well, the earliest ones would have been laid um, early 1990s by uh, cable and wireless now line. And um, especially the Eastern Caribbean fiber system, um, which connected a lot of the um, Windward and Leeward Islands. I think that was established in 1995. Uh, so we have a lot of um, old cable systems, but capacity has been built um, over, the, over, the, over the years. And so right now, the region actually has um, reasonably good uh, connectivity. The fact that we have um, island states allows um, submarine operators to, to lay cable around islands and interconnect islands, and we, we benefit from that. Uh, so submarine fiber is, is, um, is the predominant um, uh, medium of connectivity um, throughout the region. Um, used to be satellite communications, but those have been um, largely replaced by high-speed um, fiber links. Um, the earlier systems have been retired and new systems are being um, built, as well as some upgraded. I think uh, this year, uh, ECFS uh, selected uh, a partner to help them to upgrade the Eastern Caribbean fiber system um, to add capacity and, um, and deal with links and so on. So uh, we have good connectivity. Um, very good connectivity to the USA, um, particularly to, to, um, to South Florida. Um, Napa of the Americas um, is, is the connection point that most of these um, fiber systems go to. And most of them are operated by, uh, well, the dominant providers on those is uh, Lime and Columbus Communications, um, well, now Columbus Networks, as well as a number of international um, consortiums uh, who operate the, the fiber infrastructure. Uh, out of our research back in 2010, I think these, these numbers definitely would have changed, but at that point in time um, was um, 17 active um, fiber systems, um, all active and, and basically large um, data transit. Um, at that point in time, aggregate capacity was 1.2 terabits per second, 12.4, I'm sorry, terabits per second. Um, multiple cable operators, um, so you have multiple routes depending on what you can purchase, um, and the demand was continuing to grow. Uh, so the, the point I'm making out of all of that um, is that the, the, the region itself has, let's just say, has a lot of latent capacity. Um, there's the, the possibility for a um, lot of data transfer um, throughout the region with a cable map like that. Um, in reality, what we were seeing and what we continue to see uh, um, in especially, well, particularly in those countries that are not working on an internet exchange point or, or don't, um, th uh, the operators aren't interested in pairing. What we see a lot of is um, traffic heading from the country uh, to Napa of the Americas and then back from Napa of the Americas back in country. And this is what Arturo was ex explaining that um, people who want to exchange data um, tend to exchange data through an internet exchange point. That's what um, internet service providers do. Um, up until recently, and recently being last um, year or so, almost all traffic in the Caribbean uh, took, this, took this pattern. Even though you're going in country, um, uh, and it, it still exists that way in Trinidad right now, a customer on, on the Lime network in Trinidad who, who might be, um, say, vid uh, video chatting or, or, or sending some direct um, uh, file sharing or so with a customer on the flow network in Trinidad will actually have their traffic routed out of region um, to Miami and back into Trinidad. And this is a typical scenario across, across the whole region, right? Um, so what we found is that traffic between um, different ISPs tend to be routed through Miami. Some of them use New York. Um, even traffic from the um, same from the same ISP in different countries, which means uh, you could have Lime in Trinidad talking to Cable and Wireless in Jamaica. Essentially, it's the same organization, but it would not necessarily traverse their um, Caribbean ring. It would go through an exchange point in Miami. A lot of this, and th in the early days, the, the conversation has changed a, a bit now with the awareness of internet exchange points um, the conversations with the service providers have changed, 
and they have, um, are starting to migrate away from some of the, the original justifications for this kind of um, traffic routing. Um, at that point in time, the, the general statement was that um, it's more efficient to route traffic through Miami and that they have to do this for traffic engineering purposes and so on. Um, and we'll, we'll get to see why, um, why that is. Um, well, generally the traffic within an ISP's network would stay uh, local. So essentially what we have is that um, the mesh, which is um, the, the regional connectivity, this is the typical connectivity of any internet region. Um, it essentially is a, is a mesh of, of networks, and this is what we're supposed to see. Any um, device, any node on the network um, would be only a few hops um, away through a number of different routes. Uh, in the Caribbean region, um, it, it effectively um, becomes a star topology in which everybody says, um, sends data um, to the U.S., and then from the U.S. it, it, it goes back. Um, even if they're going in the same country, or sometimes when they're going between countries, it's, it's essentially going through a star like this. Um, ultimately, it's an uh, in inefficient approach uh, to data transfer. Um, the car ISPs pay um, exorbitant amounts because they have to um, use the international transit, and um, this discriminates against having uh, local connectivity. Um, because there's a mindset that um, all the traffic has to go to the, to the U.S., it, it, it becomes um, less attractive, uh, for example, to host your web servers um, within the region. It's a lot more attractive to host it in a data center in Miami. And in fact, that, is, that last point is one of the, the key issues that the CTU, that Packet Clearinghouse, that Carbnog have been, um, have been trying to address in the region. Um, the development of, um, of a different paradigm for data transfer in the region in which we are exchanging traffic through shorter hops, shorter links um, around the region rather than always routing it um, through Miami. Um, needs a couple of things to happen. Um, and this is, this is my last, um, last slide. A couple of things need to, to happen to, to address this, this whole issue. Um, on one hand, um, we want to see service, op, um, service providers increasingly start to offer uh, short transit routes uh, within region, i.e. Um, instead of, of it being easier to purchase um, Barbados, Miami, or Jamaica, Miami, and so on, uh, we want to see the, the possibility to purchase um, uh, transit Barbados uh, to Jamaica, even if it, if it has to go through uh, more than one <coughs> service provider network or cable system um, we want to see the development of business models and traffic models which make that, um, those some, some attractive options. Um, but of course, that, that can't be held in isolation. There has to be a reason for traffic to go from, um, directly from Barbados to, to Jamaica. And this is, this is one of the huge issues we're dealing with, which is local content. Um, we want to encourage and invest in, um, in, in entrepreneurs, in people in media, in entertainment, um, in all, all sectors of society to um, not only um, create a lot of local content which is of interest in the region, but also make that content available um, through facilities within the region. Um, we know that definitely inside of the Caribbean there's a lot of um, music, a lot of entertainment, a lot of sharing on, um, on just culture and food and sports and so on but we tend to host that content outside of the region because it's, it's um, less expensive and more, efi um, more efficient. Uh, as part of the development of our local internet economies though, we want to see if we can get that um, inside the region and encourage the, the exchange of traffic and data in the region. That, that's not uh, uh, an end goal in and of itself, but those, um, those kinds of changes are part and parcel of developing an internet economy, right? And the, the reason that we see the economies in, um, in North America, in Europe, in Asia, um, the reason why they have a lot of IXPs, they have a lot of commerce, they have a lot of business that's leveraging the internet is because there's an investment in allowing uh, regular normal commerce, regular normal activity that people want to do to take place within a local um, internet region. 
and that's something that we don't have um, in a very emphatic way in the Caribbean, and it's one of uh, the, the goals of CARB, of, of CTU, uh, of Packet Clearinghouse to have these kind of conversations and create opportunities for, for us to, to, um, to have that kind of infrastructure being developed in our, in our region. All right, uh, thank you. Now, hand back to Chairman. Thank you, um, Stephen. Our next presenter is Max Larson Harry. He is a network engineer, IT trainer, and entrepreneur. He founded in 2005 Transversal, which provides network training services and mobile application development. He is a co founder of the Haitian Association for the Development of Information Technology and Communication which includes almost all the key players for the technology sector in Haiti. Max has been teaching the past 10 years at State University of Haiti, and he is very active in ICT in Latin America and Caribbean. Along his contribution to launch.ht CCTLD, help Haitian ISPs to build their core infrastructure and create the Haitian Internet Exchange Point. Max has been serving as co-chair of the Public Policy Forum at LACNIC since 2008. Max holds a master degree in database and, and systems integration from the University of Nice at Sophia Antipolis in France. Max Larson Harry. Thank you, Shana. Um, I'll have a few slides regarding um, a development of Internet Exchange Point. And uh, at the end of my presentation, I'll talk a little bit about the Internet Exchange Point infrastructure in, in Haiti, um, historic of building an exchange point in, in Haiti. So we have talked a little bit um, about Internet Exchange Point. So just briefly, an internet exchange point is a physical infrastructure to reach internet service providers um, exchange traffic between their network or uh, autonomous system. It can be also between internet service provider and content uh, providers. So the basic idea is with, um, about an exchange point is to reduce the, the average per bit delivery cost of the service and also improve connectivity, improve routing efficiency and fault uh, tolerance. So we have seen the same problem in, in Haiti and in various um, islands in the Caribbean. Uh, we might have two different users in one room, but using um, connectivity from two different internet service provider. Without an internet um, exchange point in the country, what happened, the traffic goes to, uh, for example, I'm using um, uh, ISP N, and my friends is using ISP P, so my traffic goes to my um, internet service provider, and goes on and on outside of the country, in Miami, sometimes in New York, and then get back in the country. What does that mean? That means that I'm paying this guy for the connection. Uh, this guy will have to pay his upstream provider for a traffic that should have been delivered locally. Yeah? But unfortunately, in many cases, we, we just don't have this local infrastructure here 
that would enable the internet service provider instead of sending the traffic here, but keep it locally. So without this infrastructure, which could be, by the way, a um, layer two switch, so without domestic internet exchange facility, local ISP must purchase more transit capacity from foreign ISPs. This is an expensive and unnecessary exploitation of capital to develop nations at the expense of local internet industry. On the other hand, internet exchange point promotes development of local contents and cultural um, values. As it has been mentioned by my predecessors, uh, when we don't have an internet exchange point in the country, content provider, developer tend to host their content outside of the country. In, in our case, it's in Miami, even in New York, and in some cases uh, in, in Europe. So internet exchange point is a critical internet infrastructure, and at the end of the day, it's a win-win uh, for internet service provider because it, it reduce, it helped them reduce the cost of purchasing bandwidth through their upstream provider. It's a win also for content providers because they will make sure to have their content as close as possible to the uh, end user. And also it is a win for the end user because they will have uh, fast access to the content that they are trying to reach. So the same diagram we have here, but now we have this facility here, layer two switch, hosting some rack, and the local ISP accept to engage in an agreement to exchange local traffic. So in this case, when I'm sending my traffic to my friend here, my ISP, instead of sending the traffic to his upstream provider, will look at the header of the IP packet and see that the destination is another local ISP, and instead of sending it to his upstream provider, will send it to the internet exchange point facility. So this means that my packet will reach its destination faster, and it will I will have a fast uh, faster response as well. So today, when we are talking about internet exchange, when this is a, a, a map from PCH um, website, Packet Clearing House, it's half-half, 99 uh, exchange, a country uh, have uh, internet exchange point facility and 100 um, don't have, yeah? so. Even in our region, it, it makes sense to, to push, to raise awareness, and to talk to the internet service providers about uh, the usefulness of having um, internet exchange point, to build internet exchange point, to bring contents to internet exchange point facility and uh, make uh, the uh, life easier for the end users. So exchanging traffic uh, within the internet exchange point uh, in itself is a, a service, but uh, here you can have a look at other services we can have at an internet exchange point facility, and uh, um, we can use internet exchange point facility to establish um, a mechanism for measurement, uh, also hosting uh, NTP servers, and various type of um, a content delivery in network. In terms of business model, um, for the from the early days, the exchange point, most of the actual exchange point, have uh, born from uh, uh, academic environment, and so a lot of internet exchange point are host, still host by university or government. Some. Uh, Exchange point facility are still informal. Two internet service provider, three internet service providers get together and see the value of exchanging traffic and uh, decide where they are going to put um, 
a switch, layer to switch, and uh, interconnect. It could be an industry uh, association, like in, in Haiti, the exchange point um, uh, facility is managed by the ATIC, uh, the ICT uh, association, and an exchange point can also be a neutral for profit um, organization. And there is a, a case here in the Caribbean where the exchange point is, um, is create, has been created by an internet service provider uh, who actually are trying to convince other internet service provider to join the, the exchange. Regarding the uh, internet exchange point in Haiti, um, it has been operational since May 6, 2009. Um, it was a collaboration between a Lightning PCH and Network Startup Resource Center who provide uh, training and the, the first e equipments, um, layer to switches, routers for the um, ISPs. But to reach this point, we had to spend almost eight years uh, discussing meetings with the ISPs to, to convince them. The, the easiest part was is the technical you know, configuration and stuff like this. But it, you will probably um, take a lot of time to talk to the ISPs and to convince them. So although we had the, the money at some point, the technical expertise and an official letter from the regulatory authority, it, it took us a lot of time to have the internet exchange point uh, created and have uh, ISPs to uh, come and peer with each other. So at the end of the day, it takes time to build trust and uh, using a transparent approach and have the ISPs, although they are competitor, but to come and cooper cooperate, yeah, to see that even we, we are competing, um, but we can cooperate and, and find this infrastructure as a win-win for uh, everyone uh, of them. So at the beginning, we had four uh, ISPs, Access Haiti, ACN, Multilink, and uh, INET. Um, Access Haiti and INET has, have consolidated their uh, services, and uh, ACN has been acquired by uh, GGCEL since then. In August 2012, um, with the help of, of Lightning and uh, Internet uh, Software Consortium, we installed the earthquake. When one of the idea of adding value to internet exchange point is for the ISPs members to exchange traffic, but it's good to keep on bringing more content to the internet exchange point that to add value to the internet exchange point. So part of the RISES um, program, like Nick, it donated a, um, a effort of finance the installation of an effort server in Haiti. So users in Haiti for an initial DNS query, instead of having to send this request to Miami or to Atlanta or to New York, we have uh, any CAS node of the effort uh, server. So that's before, um, we are in August 2012, before the installation of the effort, this is what we had as latency, it was 160, um, 30 millisecond. And if you can see a week after, the latency dropped to something like two millisecond, three milliseconds, yeah? That's the value of bringing um, a content, in this case the output, any cast not 
as close as possible to the end, end user. Meanwhile, the other uh, root node, the uh, A root C, G, and the other ones, you can see they are flat one through time on 100 millisecond, 60 millisecond, 100 millisecond, yeah? But for the F-root, we are, and for this provider, is at two millisecond, five milliseconds. So that's 